solve this problem, all right, what we need to do is we need to factor, we need to solve this by factoring, right? So what I'm going to do, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, uh, a kind of a visual diagram to help me figure this out. And what we need to do is we need to put this down to its factors. So what I'm going to do, and remember this can be, this is in quadratic form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. When you have it in quadratic form, I always like to use this little x. Where up top the x, I do a times c, and on the bottom I put my b. So since we have a is greater than 1, it's going to be really important to follow this. So 12 times negative 5 is a negative 60. b is just 11. Now we go back through, remember like that one little worksheet we worked on? What two numbers multiply to give us negative 60, but then add to give us 11? So you've got to think, you know, what are all the factors of negative 60? Ooh, factors again, right? We've been talking about that with polynomial factors. So what are the factors of negative 60, though? They're going to multiply to give us negative 60, but then add to give us a positive 11. And we get positive 15, negative 4. All right, kind of speed up the process here. So now what do I do with these numbers? Well, when a was 1, we, these were our two values that we could use as factors, right? When a equaled 1. However, ladies and gentlemen, our a equals 12. So what we're going to do is I'm going to rewrite my equation now, except I'm going to use 15x and minus 4x as my middle terms. So you guys notice that these two terms replace my previous middle term. So that's what these two values do. I'm going to trace these as my linear terms that are going to replace my middle term. All right. Now what I do is now I have four terms. So when we have four terms, what is our factoring technique that we have to work with? Grouping, right? And that's exactly what you're going to look at. You're going to say, all right, group these two terms and group these two. So I look over here and I say, all right, what do these two terms share in common? So you look at a 12x squared and a 15x squared. And you can say, all right, what, do they, what can we fa both factor out of both of them? You can say a 3, right? Or 3x. So if I factor out a 3 x, I'm left with 4x plus 5. Now, I need to get this to be this. I need to get another 4x plus 5 here. So I'm almost there. I have a negative 4x minus 5. So to get that to be a 4x plus 5, I'm going to want to factor out a negative 1. By factoring out a negative 1, I now have a positive 4x plus 5. Then what we look at it is we say, all right, can we factor something in general from this whole equation? And yes, both of these terms both share now the expression 4x plus 5. So I factor that out. So then I have 4x plus 5 times 3x minus 1 equals 0. No. You're just factoring it. It's like, um, it's like over here. You, they both share an x, so you just factor it out. So you have 4x plus 5 minus 3x minus 1. And now we can apply the zero product property. Plus 4x 5 equals 0. And 3x minus 1 equals 0. Solve. You get x equals negative 5 fourths. x equals a positive 1 third. OK? Good. Remember this. This is a technique to use to practice. Good stuff. There we go.